He's Lane Kiffin was with Alabama, no longer now the head coach at Florida Atlantic and uh, joins us now. Coach, how are you this morning? Great, Dan. Thanks for having me. Where are you today? Uh, I am in Boca at uh, Florida Atlantic. I Take me back a couple of weeks ago when you took this job. Why Florida Atlantic? Well, it was about the people. So going through these process before is you, you know, you go through the interview process and you sit down and, and, you know, there's usually maybe three, four, five, six, seven people in there, um, you know, from the university. And uh, a lot of times you go in these and you kind of have split rooms, you know, where you feel like half of them are really about football and, and really understand um, the things it takes to win. And, um, and then maybe half of them aren't or maybe half of them, really like you, but half of them kind of like someone else, you know, another candidate. I I felt in this situation, um, there were five people in the room, the president, the athletic director, and three other um, powerful people at the university. And it was, it was very obvious to me coming out of that room that they had a plan, a specific plan of making Florida Atlantic a championship program and a specific plan of coming to get me to be part of that. And so I just left the room with a great feeling about it, and um, obviously it's a great location. When it comes to recruiting, as you look at all the Florida schools, really every one of them, um, you know, whether it's UCF, uh, USF this year, um, obviously Florida, Florida State, Miami, um, every school every school has had a, a run of some really good teams at times, and that's because of the great high school coaches and the great players in the state of Florida. So. Um, it, it all just came together and was um, you know, a stage in my career where I wasn't just looking to be a head coach no matter what and just taking a job no matter what. It had to be a place um, that I felt was committed to winning and that we could go and really win because um, you know, winning's really fun, just like it's been for these last 26 games. You go back and you talk to uh, Nick Saban. What was the arrangement you guys had for the remainder of the season? Uh, when I came back, I had the press conference down here and um, came back that next day and asked Coach what he wanted to do. Obviously, he's the head coach, and um, it's his decision. He said that he wanted me to, to stay on and coach and um, you know try to manage manage both jobs. Uh, we laid out a plan that was really basically in the in the kind of downtime, you know, in the bowl preparation. Uh, you know, that would be FAU time, whether that was calling recruits, whether that was watching recruits on film watching your current roster to see where it is. There's a lot of stuff, obviously, when you take a head job that normally you're there and you're there all day long every day. And now all of a sudden you're trying to, to do both these things. Um, you're trying to hire a, a, a complete staff, interview those guys. Um, I don't, I believe in interviewing in person, you know, and, and getting a good feel for your coaches. So uh, there was a lot going on. Uh, we managed that the best that we could and, and, used the time when it was Alabama time for Alabama, and then at, at night at the bowl games or, or in Tuscaloosa, used that uh, for Florida Atlantic time and um, tried to try to do the best that we could. And then we really, after this last game, you know, going through it, and we had a month to prepare and a month to do all this and sitting there going, okay, wait, we basically have a little more than a week, you know, and, and you still have you still haven't finished half your staff down here. Uh, you've got mid-year recruits. You know that that start school um, coming up here in, in about a week, so um, there, there's a lot to do. And I just kind of reflected, you know, after the game and watching the game um, on film, and, and sitting down with coach and just saying, coach, I I want to be here, but I, I don't know. You know, the quarterback played it played probably statistically his worst game of the year. You know, it, was that my fault? You know, as I look at it, you know, as I look at calling the game, did I call a great game? You know, so I, I don't know those answers, but it was very hard as I sat there to say, okay, am I putting these kids that have worked so hard to get to 14-0 with one game left in the best position to win? I'm trying to, but, and then he said, well, you know, ask yourself, you know, was there times that you're sitting in a meeting and you're thinking about the other job or you're thinking about what you have to do? You know, you've got a coach flying in that night, you know, and you're in, you're in meetings with the staff, you know, watching film and, you know, you're, you're worried about who's picking up at the airport, you know, what, what questions you're going to ask him and your mind's kind of both places. And I said, you know, I uh, probably was, you know, now does that mean that 
that that impacted the game? I don't know that answer, but I didn't want to sit there and say, all of a sudden, we don't play well on offense and lose a national championship game, and it'd be my fault that I didn't have the players in the best position to win. So it was very difficult. We wouldn't have been able to do it if Sark wasn't there. You know, this is a, this is a, a very unique situation because Sark and I think almost exactly alike. Uh, we we just have we just kind of grew up together. So when to call plays, what to call during the game, during practices, what to do in the red zone. You know, we can go in separate rooms. We used to joke, go in separate rooms. You can tell us, okay, come out with the five best plays to run on the, on the four-yard line, and we'll come back. It'll probably be the exact same plays. Um, it's, it's just a strange thing. And so, Could you have stayed being if there, you wanted to, Lane? Yes. Yeah, Coach and I talked about it. You know, this was, this was a mutual decision, but this was a, a decision that, um, you know, I, I needed to do. Um, I didn't want to really, but I needed to. And I think this is a... You know, part of the, you know, as we talk about the maturity of being with Saban and, and thinking things through versus just snap decisions, which I've kind of made a lot of snap decisions in my life. That's just my personality versus really coach thinks things through a lot slower. And, you know, it took the, took the night to think it over, came back in the morning, revisited it, and just said that this is the best of the players. Um, you know, we're still tr- figuring out what, you know, compliance-wise, how, how much I can do because I want to help in every way that I can. Um you know, to, to win this last game, you know, and, and trying to figure out, can we kind of switch roles, you know, where, where I'm kind of Sark, you know, off the field. And then he, he's, uh, becomes me, you know, running the meetings and, and calling the game because you can't do, you know, rule wise, it's not like the NFL where you can just have as many coaches as you want, you know, only the, hmm. only the main coaches are allowed to coach the, the actual players. You know how this looks though, on the outside, right? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's very, it's very strange, but but we're not worried about that. You know, Coach always says, you know, one of the hundred things I learned from me always says, you are to do what is the best for the players in every decision that you make, no matter what it is. And this was that situation. It didn't matter. And we talked at length about this and slept on it and talked about it again yesterday morning. And it wasn't about what the media is going to say. Mm-hmm. It was not about that at all. It was about what is the best for these players that have worked so hard to get to this point? I mean, what? There's only been a couple 14 0 teams in the history of football, you know, and we're one of them right now. And what put us in the best position to win this last one and finish an unbelievable run of three straight SEC championships and two back to back national championships? Um, it's just, it's been an awesome run. And I wouldn't be able to live with that. I screwed it up you know, by not doing what was best for the kids. But, but so it should, was a very, very difficult decision. Should you have just taken the Florida Atlantic job when it was given to you in retrospect and just not should gone I back to Alabama? Taken. And not gone back to Alabama? Uh, I, I don't know that, um, you know, because, again, I, I don't know, you know, did we not play that well in that game because of that? I mean, that's a really good defense. I know a lot of people don't um, have a lot of respect for Washington because it is the – you know, it, it's not the SEC, um, but that's a really good defense and one that, I mean, you saw last night, USC, um, how, how explosive, how great they're on offense, you know, and I think USC maybe had 24, 28 points or whatever it was against Washington. That was the most all year long. You know, they don't give up a lot of explosive plays. They play really, really hard on defense. They're coached extremely well. And so I knew no matter what, I, I didn't think that that was going to be a really high scoring game because no one had done it against them. Um, because they're really well coached with a lot of really good players. Um, I think those DBs are really underrated. I think that's that's one of the best secondaries in the country um, at Washington, and and they're they're hard to create explosive plays against. And then as the game was going, you want to win the game. So uh, I got extremely conservative in the game in the second half on purpose because I felt in that game the way our defense was playing, the way the punter was punting the ball, there was one way to lose the game: turnovers. And Washington was the number one turnover team in the country coming in. So said all week to our players again and again and again, if you don't turn the ball over, we will win this game no matter what. And and our guys did that. You know, they didn't turn the ball over. Where are you, the second game in a row. Where are you going to watch the national title game? We're still figuring that out. You know, like I said, we're still trying to uh, figure out, you know, what are the compliance rules um, on this? You know, can I be in the press box? Uh, is a potential, you know, um, like Sark, like Sark was for me, and um, you know, so we're still figu- we're still figuring that out, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure that 
that we win this thing and um, finish what we started. What's uh, Coach Saban want? Pardon? What's What's Coach Saban want with you for the national title game? Does he want you helping in the well, building? I, I I feel that way. Yeah, I mean that's how how we left was you know we were gonna um, you know find out what we can do uh, you know compliance wise you know what are the exact rules? Obviously, this is a unique situation, and like I said, it's not like it's. It's not like the NFL where you can just add coaches. You know, mm-hmm. um, when you when you when you activate one, like we activated Sark for this game, then then no one, no matter what, I can't coach the players. But we're trying to figure out: can I do what what Sark did this whole year for me? Can I be there that way for him? Well, good luck with uh, whatever happens uh, next week, and uh, thanks for joining us. Good luck at Florida Atlantic, Lane. All right, I appreciate it as always. Thanks a lot. Have a great week. All right, it's Lane Kiffin. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.